One of the nurses, while continuing to prop up the body, released the boy's hand, still grey with the print of the morning's papers, and moved the hose over patches of drying blood, hovering occasionally to loosen the surgical gauze and transparent steri strips, which had been fastened to the skin of the chest and belly. In another room, a hospital porter was trampling freshly circumcised foreskins to make wine. His eyes were warm and Boy, blows, died on the operating table. His body was taken to a room at the end of the corridor and placed in those kisses with sleeps where red pans are emptied and washed. In another room, a hospital porter was trampling freshly circumcised foreskins to make wine. His eyes were warm and marauding, illuminated by the fluorescent orange delivery bag he had snatched before the operation, now being worn around his shoulders. The undelivered newspapers, folded ready for the letterbox, mostly tabloids, poked from a deep tray of shredded desiccated foreskins which the porter had trampled on the previous day. Later, in the waiting room, Roy Blow's parents were handed the ashes of the newspapers, mostly tabloids, the headlines now mixed with the incinerated foreskins of former patients. Mrs Blow's thanked the member of staff, saying that she would mix these ashes with the bodies after it had been cremated. Mr Blow's thanked the member of staff for the bottle of wine he had been handed, saying that he would open it after the cremation, while Mrs Blow's mixes the ashes together. Yeah. <laughs> 